Good morning, uplifters. I see the people are rolling in already. Good morning, Lisa Hill. Good morning, Thomas Wheeler. Come on, uplifters. Don't y'all hide today. Don't hide. I got a lot to talk about and a short time to get there. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Okay, let me see here, get my trusty, handy dandy computer here ready to rock and roll. Okay, 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 okay. Here we go, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Good morning, Rena. Marquita. Noemi. Good morning, everybody. I see Kelly, Linda, Shelty, Diane. Looks like the uplifters are coming on in. Okay, if you recognize my music today, then you remember it from the 80s. It was the theme song. It was the opening song that the championship Chicago Bulls used to come out to. Some of you guys remember it because in those days, the king of the land was Michael Jordan. And you could not beat the Bulls. You might beat them one game, but you wouldn't beat them every game. Good morning, Elaine. It is good to see you, my sister. Good morning, Kelly. It is good to see you. Everybody, what a glorious weekend. And what a great week it's going to be because we're going to talk about that winning mentality. Now, last week we talked about what it's like to be down in a valley, down in your low moments. But we don't ever stay in the valley. We come on up out of it. So good morning, Rose Kim. Good morning. I saw you online this weekend in your pink shirt. Lisa Hill, I saw you this weekend. Ted Finkelman, my man in Las Vegas. I don't know what you're doing this week. Are you in Vegas, Orlando? Are you in Dubai? You're everywhere just like I am. So, good morning, Uplifters. Let me tell y'all something. I have got to tell you. I have checked high. I have checked low. I have looked everywhere, and I can't find it written anywhere. What are we doing, sound man? Uh, my guy says he needs to make some adjustments here. I can't find it written anywhere that this is not going to be your absolute best week ever. In fact, I firmly believe that this is going to be a record-breaking week for you. I firmly believe, JC, that this is going to be a record-shattering week for you. I firmly believe that this week, you're absolutely going to kill it and that everybody is going to sing your praise. Everybody's going to know your name. My sound guy here is making some adjustments. Are they having trouble hearing me? No, they're not hearing you. There's a slight echo. Okay, there's a slight echo. He says that he wants to try to get rid of the echo. Well, look, I can't help it that my voice sounds so good that you're hearing it two or three times. I'm not going to change what I do. All right, so here we go. Here we go. Doc, Wayne. Diaz, good morning, my morning, sister. Shani, good morning. Good, good, morning. Morning. Good, good morning. Good to see you. Shani, I'll Shani. be seeing I'll you be later on. I think you owe me a text, text message. message. Okay, okay. Yolande, look at here, look at here. It's good morning to you. Morning now, to you. now, so, so if, if, let me back, let up, back a up a little bit. bit. One of the things, I already knew what I was going to talk to you about, but I saw something yesterday that actually blew my mind. Uh, I stopped to watch the NBA three-point contest. It happened uh, yesterday during All-Star Weekend. Now, you, you guys know I don't really talk sports a lot on the show, but they were talking about a great moment in sports back in 1988. Now, some of you guys weren't born in 88. Some of you guys were like me coming into your prime, and others of you were... You know, in 1988, you were just doing whatever you were doing. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. So, Larry Bird, if you remember the great NBA legend, the Hall of Famer Larry Bird, was famous because he won the 1988 three-point contest. Now, it's not just that he won the contest. It's two things that Larry Bird did prior to the contest that made him a winner. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Six proven ways that you can adopt a winner's mentality. Let me tell you what Larry Bird did that was so absolutely outstanding. Good morning, Arlene. Okay, they said I got some uh, echoing going on. Is it still echoing? Yeah, it's still echoing. Okay. Hold on, I'm trying to figure out what we're doing. They're saying I got an echo. 
I think it's coming. It's adding microphone audio, and I can't get it out. Okay, you want me to switch to my office? Huh? Um, Hold on, they're trying to cure my, my troubles because of the echo. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Frank. My sound guy's on the scene now. Give us just a second. He's switching. But I'll switch if I have to. I'll switch mics if I have to. Just a second. We're trying to cure our echo. I read your comment, Thomas Wheeler. 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 Just kidding. Okay. Did we cure our echo? Uplifters, let me know if you can hear me just fine now. Give me a thumbs up. Somebody say just fine. If that cured it. It's not my phone. My phone's not on. Can you hear me okay now, Uplifters? What are you hearing, people? I did it. Did I get it? I got it. Okay, so it looks like we got rid of our echo. We had some glitch in our system. Uh, is that much better, Marquita? Marquita says that's much better. Thank you, Marquita, for tuning in from Fort Worth, Texas. Thank you, Jason, for tuning in from Birmingham, Alabama. Thank you, Ted, for tuning in. Um, there you go. Rose Kemp. If Rose Kemp says I have no echo, I have no echo. All right. That's why you have sound, guys. That's why I have Tico in here with me. Okay. So I was going back to what happened in 1988, and today's uplift is about you and winning. I want every uplifter out there to be a winner but develop the winning mentality. You see, having a winning mentality is a mindset. Now, we're going to talk about how to get into that mindset and apply it to your business today so that you have a winning mentality in your business. So, I was going back to 1988 when the great Larry Bird was competing in the NBA All-Star Contest. Next to him was Michael Jordan. And Michael Jordan, yes, Michael Jordan sat in awe as he watched Larry Bird compete for the NBA three-point contest. Now, what did Larry Bird do that made Michael Jordan take notice? Here we go. What did Larry Bird do that put Michael Jordan in awe and made Michael Jordan just sit back and laugh? The first thing that Larry Bird did in having his winning mentality was this. Larry Bird didn't even take off his warm-up outfit. Right. Isn't that amazing? So when everybody else had on their jerseys and their shorts and their shooting around, Larry Bird walked onto the court in his warm-ups, never took his jacket off, and proceeded to win round one of the NBA three-point contest. Right away, he got into everybody's mind. He had every person sitting there in awe. Larry Bird sent a signal to everybody around, you guys are playing for keeps, I'm just going to warm up, and my warm-up is going to be better than your actual competition. Now, what else did Larry Bird do in 1988 that made Michael Jordan uh, look at him in awe? When Larry Bird walked into the locker room, there was Michael Jordan, there was Patrick Ewing, and there were all these NBA All-Stars there. Larry Bird looked at everyone in the room, and he said, so, which one of y'all is playing for second? Now, imagine that. That is a bad man. He walked into the room with Michael Jordan, everyone else in there, and he looked at everybody and said, so, which one of you all is playing for second? Now, Rose Kemp and Doris, Doris, I want you to make sure that everybody around you this week knows that they're playing for second. Uh, Frank, I want everybody in your circle to know around you this week that they're playing for second. When you walk in the room and it's full of realtors, it's full of competition, you need to look at them and say, which one of you all are playing for second? That's that Larry Bird mentality. That's the mentality of champions, and that's what you're going to have to do if you want to be successful in life. You've got to know that you know. You've got to walk in the room already being a winner. Now, wow, that's deep. You've got to walk in the room already knowing you won. Yes, Thomas Wheeler, you've got to walk in. Good morning, Reese Stewart. How do you walk in the room already knowing that you won? Let's talk about that. What do these people do? These women, these men, the women that are champions, 
the men that are champions, the ones that are winners, the ones who are successful in their brokerages, the ones who have all the sales, the ones who have all the clients and the, and the members working for them. What do they do? How did they adopt that winner's mentality? So let's talk about this. The first thing you got to do if you want to have a winner's mentality is that you have to learn from your success and your failures. So number one today, you must learn from your success and your failures. You've got to learn as much from your failures as you do from your success. You see, winners learn from their success. And I'm talking about the success of others and themselves. Not only do they learn that from that, but they also learn from the failures of others. You see, it's one thing to learn from other people's successes, but do you have the ability to study their failures and also make sure that you don't make the same failures that not just you make over and over again, but them too? One of the things that I have learned is the, how to look at other people's failures and, and process that and turn that into my success. You see, I don't have to go through what they went through to get where I need to be now. I have learned how to value their success and their failure. So if someone started a business and the business didn't work, don't just study what went right, study what went wrong. Good morning, Patty. Uh, Michelle, learn from other people's success and their failures. When people go out of business, ask them what happened. When somebody has to close down their brokerage, ask them why. If so, when people are switching brokers, find out why they're switching. If there was a marriage that didn't work, learn from the successes of the marriage and the failures of the marriage. So that's what winners do. The first thing they do is learn from other people's successes and their failures. Okay, so next, what else do winners do? Um, winners have a system of, they. Well, let me just go to number two. Be consistent, even when it hurts. So the first thing that winners do is learn from other people's successes and their failures. You got to learn as much from the failure as you do the success. But the second thing that you got to do, if you need to change this mindset, if you're going to have a winning mindset, is you're going to be consistent even when it hurts. Now, this is the part that other folks are not willing to do. Everybody's always there to win. But are you going to be consistent until it hurts? That's what celebrates the women from the girls, honey, and the men from the boys. Do you have the ability to keep showing up when no one's there? I tell people all the time, I would do this uplift on Monday mornings at 930 if I had 15 people watching or if I had 50 or if I had 1,000 because winners are consistent even when it hurts. Winners are the last people to give up and the first people to win because of that. They're the last people to give up. A winner is the last person to give up, but they're the first to win because of it, and they are consistent in spite of all the distraction that's going on around them. Listen, when I walk in this building on Monday morning, everybody's trying to say something to me. Everybody's got a word. Everybody's trying to catch me. Everybody wants to reach me before uplift, and I have to be able to process that even... Uh, and, and still get on here and give you a positive uh, report. You got to learn to be consistent even when it hurts. Oftentimes, the need to come to work, the need to show up to work, the need to be where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there, hurts. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it hurts. You have to walk away from the family sometimes. You have to walk away from the kids sometimes. You have to walk away from the husband sometimes because you have to be consistent. And it's the inconsistency in your life that is keeping you from achieving your goals. <laughs> Woo! If I was a preacher, I would say I wish I had a church. It's the inconsistency in your life that is keeping you from reaching your goals. If you Go somewhere and discover consistency and learn how to do what you're supposed to do over and 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 over. Be there. Be there. Be there. Be there. You got to show up. You must show up. You must be there. You can't be there on Mondays and then not there on Tuesday. You can't be there on Wednesday and then not there on Thursday. You got to be there. 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 You got to show up. You got to show up. You got to show up. You got to make the calls. You got to make the calls. You got to make the calls. Are y'all getting this here? 
If you're going to be a winner in business, you're going to have to be consistent. Some of you guys quit as soon as things get tough. You quit as soon as somebody talks about you. You quit as soon as somebody posts something about you. You quit as soon as social media is not going your way. You quit when the likes go down on social media. What's up with that? You quit because you're not getting likes? You mean to tell me you're going to stop doing your whole business? You're going to stop working your dream? You're going to stop with your business model because you're not getting likes on Facebook? Oh, my God. Who are you? You mean to tell me you've got thousands of dollars invested in a business, thousands of dollars invested in an idea, and you're going to quit because two or three people on staff don't think it's a good idea? You're going to quit because your mama says you're telling all your business on Facebook? Now, some of y'all need to stop telling your business on Facebook. But that's another thing. You don't quit. Always be consistent. You got to keep showing up. You got to keep coming to work. You got to keep making the donuts if you're ever going to be successful. You cannot quit. Over, that's right, and over and over. Make the call, make the call, make the call. Send the email, send the email, send the email. Return the calls, return the calls. And it's those things that are going to make you a winner in life. Okay, the third thing I want you to do today. That's right, Michelle, amen. The third thing that I want you to do today is this. Know this. Winners, figure out how to channel out the noise and do the right things every day to ensure long-term success. Winners know how to channel out the noise. You have got to learn how to channel out the noise. I tell you, one of the first things I have to do every Monday morning when I come in here is channel out the noise. All the things, the problems, so-and-so called, my lockbox didn't work, my, my car broke down, I'm going to be late today, somebody got COVID, everybody got COVID, he got COVID, she got COVID, they got COVID, everybody, my dog got COVID. You've got to channel out the noise in order to get to the job and do whatever the job is. You cannot let all this noise get to you. I use Larry Bird as my analogy. When a person is standing at the free throw line of life, you're standing there, and it's a tie game, and it's up to you to break the tie. It's up to you to win the game. What's going on in front of you? You're standing at the free throw line, but behind you in the stands, all the crowd is waving. All the people got their little number one things. All the people are jumping up and down, and they're trying to get your attention so that you miss your shot. Don't do that. You've got to focus. You've got to be where your feet are. You've got to make your shot at the free throw line of life. You have got to take and make your shot. Do you understand what I'm saying? It is the world's goal to distract you from your moment, from your thing, from your time. But you've got to figure out a way to channel out the noise around you and do what you are supposed to do. Whew, that's right. Get rid of the noise, Michelle. You've got to get rid of the noise. Get rid of the noise. Get rid of the noise. All the people in your ear. Your mama's calling. Your sister's calling. Your auntie and them are calling. Your kids are calling. They're calling about the bills. They're calling about the COVID. They're calling about the, 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 the house note. They're calling about the car note. But listen, none of that's worth a thing if you can't focus and do your job and do what you're supposed to do so that you can pay the bills, so that you can be there for the family, so that you can get the vaccine, so that you can get the COVID test. Are y'all following me here? You've got to stay focused this week. This week, for my uplifters, this is going to be a make or break week. This is going to be a week where you catapult yourself ahead. This is going to be a week restored where you separate yourself from the other schools. This is going to be a week, Lori, where everybody sings in your praises. This is going to be a week, Precious, where everybody knows who you are. But in order to make be there, in order to, to do what you're supposed to do, at the moment you're supposed to do it, you've got to channel out all the noise and perform and make your shot. It's 9.48 a.m., Monday, March 8th. You're watching Uplift with Cliff, and we're talking about six proven ways you can adopt a winning mentality. Okay, you guys ready? Now, let's go on to the next thing. What winners do. Don't take things personal. Okay? Don't take it personal. 
You see, the one thing that can disrupt the mindset of a winner is taking a losing situation or any situation personal. You're supposed to take it as a learning experience. All too often, we take things personal. It's not personal. When situations are seemingly out of your control, true winners are always thinking, what can I learn from this? Boom. When it's out of control, when things hurt, when it finally does hit you, when things are out of control, true winners are always thinking, what can I learn from this? You see, oh gosh, here we go. Here we go. A winner knows what it feels like to win. So losing is something that as soon as you feel it, you know it, and you know it's going to happen early. While other people are still celebrating their win, a true winner, the one that didn't win, is already processing, what can I learn from this? You see, <laughs> you, will, you may beat me one time because everybody if, eventually loses sometime. But will you beat me the second time? You see, you're not going to get me twice. Because once I've realized that I'm not winning the first time, I'm already processing what can I learn from this. I'm studying you. I'm studying how you won. I'm studying what you did to win. And more than anything else, Tico, I'm studying how you acted while you were winning. Because it's how you are acting while you're winning that's going to cause me to want to beat you even more. You see, I look at how people win, and that motivates me. True winners will always ask, what can I learn from this? It's 9.50 a.m. I hope I'm reaching some people today. That's right. I hope I'm getting to you today. I'm trying to help you understand what true winners do that other people don't. Now, the next characteristic of a true winner is this. And some of you guys got to get this. True winners Speak to motivate rather than to harm. Oh, wow. Woo! I got a new person in the studio today. Leah, she's sitting in. You can't see me. Leah, listen to what I'm saying. True winners speak to motivate rather than to harm. If you've got a demotivator in your life, it's time to cut that zero to date. If you've got a demotivator in your life, someone that makes you feel worse when you leave them than when you got there, Will Laval. It's time to cut them right now because they're not winners. These are leeches. They're leeches on your spirit. They're leeches on your soul. They're leeches on your heart. They come dressed and disguised as winners, but true winners only speak to motivate, never to harm. You've got a leech in your life disguised as a winner. Oh, they got a good word every now and then when your winning benefits them, but when your, your winning no longer benefits them, and they don't have anything else positive to share with you, you've got a leech on your life. Rose, I know you know what I'm talking about. Kathy, I know Tatiana, you know what I'm talking about. Polly Romulus, if you got any leeches, energy vampires in your life today, this week is going to be a good week to get rid of them. I wish I had two or three people here that understand what I'm talking about. Because true winners need to motivate rather than to harm. Winners love seeing other people win so that they can use their words to motivate them. Most winners know what it feels like to be doubted and discouraged, so when they're in that position, they're always trying to build someone else up. Never leave someone worse than the way you found them. Oh my gosh. Never leave someone worse than you found them. Aaron Luden, my boy, he knows it. Every time he sees me, he tries to build me up and make me feel like a champion. Never leave someone feeling worse than you found them. Always build other people up. All right? All right. The next thing that winners do, winners fight every day for their goals. Winners fight every day for their goals. Listen, life is hard. If it were easy to succeed, everybody would be a success, honey. It's going to be hard. You're going to even have to take heaven by storm. So let me tell you, you're going to have to fight every day for your goals. Winners take massive action towards their goals every day. 
Now, massive action does not mean that you're doing a million things in a day. It means you're taking practical steps towards achieving your goal every day. Okay, y'all got that? Massive steps towards ma your goal. Massive action every day. Always building people up, but you are going to have to fight in this lifetime. That's right. As Rose Kim said, you're going to have to be a gold digger. You got to fight to get there. Listen, if it were easy, everybody would be doing it. You got that? That's what's going to separate. You don't want it to be easy. You know what? There is no fun standing at the top of a mountain you didn't climb. There's no glory in that. Oh, God. There's no glory in putting on a championship belt, but you didn't actually beat the champion. There ain't no fun in that. There ain't no fun in putting on a gold medal, but you didn't skate against anybody. You didn't play against anybody. You're going to have to fight to get where you're going to be. And to be the best, as Ric Flair says, woo, you got to beat the best. Okay, I'm going to keep on moving right here. That's right, Doc. Up and up and up. Now, the next thing, and this is my last point of the day. My last point of the day. I'm getting warmed up. I'm getting warmed up, Frank. I love you, my brother. Uh, uh, Michelle, I love you. Okay, y'all ready? Y'all ready? Okay, uplifters. Uplifters, hear me out. My last point, if you don't get any other point, get this one. I feel like Hulk Hogan. I'm getting charged. I'm getting charged, brother. Brother, what you going to do? I feel like, you know, charged, brother. I'm getting recharged right now. Yes, I am getting recharged. And you're going to get these pipe. No, I'm not going to put the pythons on you. But I am recharging. What are you talking about, Cliff? What are you talking about? Aaron Looting, listen to this. Winners use their comfort zone to recharge, but that's about it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You will never find a true winner in their comfort zone. It's not where they hang out. It's not where winners hang out. Winners don't hang out in their comfort zone. They hang out out there on the edge. They hang out on the edge of the razor blade. Winners hang out where other folks don't, where eagles dare. Although winners go to their comfort zone to recharge, yeah, I go to mama's house to sit down. Yeah, I go to my house to get away from the world. I go to my comfort zone to recharge, but that's the only thing I do in my comfort zone because everything else I do is out there in the mission field. Everything else I do is out there trying to go where you want. Everything else that I do is out there, I'm trying to do what you want. Listen, they spend a limited amount of time in their comfort zone, but once the battery gets to be 100%, they unplug and get back to work. What good is the phone if it's always on the charger? Woo! Boy, I wish I could turn around. Oh, my God. Ellie, tell them. Listen, listen. Somebody, what good is a phone if it's already got to be on the charger? Oh, my God. I wish I had about 10 uplifters. Y'all give me some thumbs up. Are y'all dead out there? Give me some hearts. Give me some likes. Give me some elbows. Give me some something. Hit me with some emojis out there. What good is a phone if it's always on the charger? The phone is no good if you can't take it out in the world with you. Winners don't hang out in their comfort zone. The only thing they do is recharge there. But that once they are charged, they go back out where they can make some things happen. Magic happens when you get out of the comfort zone. That's right. Come on, Tatiana. Hit me with some thumbs up, Rose. Hit me with some hands up, Mary. Hit me with something out there that lets me know you understand that, Uplifters. It's okay to get in your comfort zone and hover there. But, hey, I want to know, what have you done for me lately? Like Janet Jackson, what new thing have you done? Have you taken a new shot? Can you shoot from a different place on the court? Can you learn to swing the bat a different way? Can you throw something else? Can you do something else? I'm trying to ask you today, are you learning how to thrive out there outside of your comfort zone? Because that's what's going to make people scream your name. That's what's going to make people know your name. That's what's going to put you at the top of the million dollar producer. That's what's going to make you achieve those goals in life. Doing what you do when nobody else is around. Whew. Michelle, I'm trying to help some people. Kathy Atkins seems to have it today. Some people are getting it today. Life begins woo, where your comfort zone ends. Oh, my God. Let me back on up and zoom back in. I'm zooming into you. Life begins where your comfort zone ends. 
And if you are going to be a winner, then you're going to have to learn how to thrive outside of your comfort zone. This week, Uplifters, this is going to be your best week ever. This is the week where you break out of your shell. This is the week where you hulk up. This is going to be the week because you're going to go where nobody else is and you're going to plant your flag. Anna Gazar, you're going to plant your flag where other people are scared to go. Uh, Rose, you're going to plant your flag where other people dare to go. This is going to be the week that every one of you uplifters out there absolutely break out of the rut you're in and chart new paths because you're getting away from your comfort zone. Woo, I'm breaking a sweat in here, bro. I'm breaking a sweat. It's 9.59 a.m. and I'm supposed to be staying on track. This is supposed to be a 30-minute show, but y'all have got me fired up because I see a few uplifters out there who are ready to do something different in their life. I see a few uplifters out there who are ready to make a change. I see a few uplifters today that are, oh, I'm psychic, I'm psychic. One of you guys is getting ready to make the phone call that you've been dreading making. One of you guys is getting ready to send the email that you weren't sure you were going to send. One of you guys is getting ready to make a knock on a door that you previously had decided you weren't going to do because life begins where your comfort zone ends. If you're going to be a winner, you're going to have to take the shot when nobody else wants to take the shot. If you're going to be a winner, you're going to have to be the one with one second left that says, give me the ball, coach. If you're going to be the winner, you're going to have to be the one willing to go to the bank and get the loan and start your own brokerage. If you're going to be the winner, you're going to have to be the one that's willing to go in your bank account, take some money and pay for the ad to advertise that home. If you're going to be the winner, you're going to have to be the one that's willing to go out and get your credit right so you can get the business started so you can buy the house. If you're going to be the winner, you're going to have to get out of your comfort zone today and live your life and not just live it, but live it to the fullest. I'm talking to my uplifters today. I'm talking to the people out there who want life to be abundant for them. Ladies and gentlemen, if this is touching you, if this is you I'm talking about, if this is your life that I'm speaking about today, if this is your life that's about to change, I need you to hit share. I need you to share this with 20 people, 30 people. I need you to hit copy and paste and make sure that everybody in your circle knows why you're calling, knows why you're texting, knows why you're emailing, and knows why you're knocking because this week you're going to be a winner and they need to... Just expect your call. Woo! <laughs> they need to expect your text. They need to expect you to knock on the door. And they need to expect your email. Because, honey, Rose Kemp for the win. Mary Fernandez for the win. Frank McManus for the win. Rosie for the win. Linda for the win. Aaron Luden for the win. Precious for the win. Tico for the win. Ellie for the win. Matthew for the win. I'm talking about Polly Romulus for the win. Michelle for the win. Shawty for the win. This is you taking your game winning shot on today and you are a winner because you did everything you needed to do to be the winner. Ellie Probst for the win. Now look, it's time for us to do some affirmations. And you know what? Today we just got one affirmation. Today I want you to look in that camera and say it with me, Drachecka. Drachecka, for the win. Come on, come on. Precious, say it. Precious, for the win. I need you to type it in there. Will Laval, for the win. I need you to say, insert your name. Insert your name. Type it in the screen, but also say it out loud because you are a winner. And it's time for you to take your game-winning shot. Juliana Giordano for the win. That's right. <laughs> Juliana, hey, hey, put the hashtag down there. Let's make it trend. Put your name for the win. Amelia, it's you for the win. Ellie, for the win. Rosie, for the win. Y'all got it. Sharice, for the win. Lori, for the win. It's you. This is your day, your time, your moment, your hour, your month, your year. This moment, right now, it's your name. Put it in there for the win. That's right. You are making that game-winning shot. You are a winner. You are a champion. This has been Uplift with Cliff. 
is 10.03 a.m., March the 8th, and I'm talking about Tatiana for the win, Patty for the win. Look at Cheryl for the win. You guys are getting it. Some of you guys who never type in, who never comment, I'm just going to pause for a second. Break out of your mold today. Break out of the comfort zone that I really don't chime in and just put your name in there for the win. Believe in yourself for one second. I know you promised that you're going to share this, but it's you for the win. You will for the win. Type your name in there real quick. Believe in yourself. Just put your name in there for the win. Hashtag for the win. All week long for the win. Reese Stewart. That's right. Best three. <laughs> best three pointer you ever shot. It's Reese Stewart for the win. Listen, guys. It's 10.04 a.m. and I am hoarse. I did not mean to lose my voice in here on Uplift today. Elizabeth Smith Santana for the win. That's right. I didn't intend on losing my voice here today, but I know I'm talking to winners. And when winners talk to winners, iron sharpens iron. There's going to be some sparks. And there's some sparks in this room today because I'm feeding off you because it's Tico for the win. Leah for the win. M Mincy for the win. Shawnee for the win. Nikia Greer for the win. Daryl Joseph for the win. That's right. It's you. You're the winner today. You're the one taking that last shot. You're my go-to person. And it's going to be you for the win. Y'all know I love you. I'm going to send some love. I've already called everybody's name. I've already told you how much I love you. So I'm just sending some love out there today. It's 10.05 a.m. And I have got to conclude this week's uplift. But I need you to know that you are a winner. And that nothing can stop you. No one can stop you. You develop these habits of winners that I talked about today. And then you go out and make it happen. Step out on faith and win like Marquita in Fort Worth, Texas. Step out like Kathy Marino. Marino. Kathy, Marino Kathy Marino for, for the, the win. win. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. Listen. Listen. On behalf on of the 18,000 8, members of the Orlando Regional, Orlando Regional Realtor, Realtor Association, Association, our 50 our member 50 staff, staff, we love you. We love you. On behalf on of behalf President of Natalie, Natalie Aerosmith, Aerosmith, best president, best president ever. ever, you are loved. You are loved. On, behalf on behalf of President Reese Stewart, 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 best past best president past ever, ever, you're loved. You're loved. On behalf, on behalf of Lisa, of Lisa Juliana, Juliana, Anna, Anna Tansy, Reese, your love. Your love. Guys, guys, you're absolutely, you're absolutely awesome. awesome. And it's time it's for time me to for sign, me out. sign out. Our affirmation for, for today is you saying you your, say name your name for the win. For the win. Lisa, Hill Lisa Hill for the win. For the win. I'm going to sign, sign out right now. Right I look now. forward I look to seeing you next week at 9.30 a.m. Next week at 9.30 a.m., we're going to meet gonna back, meet up, back again, up again, and I'm going to love gonna on you love some more. You some this has been Uplift with Cliff. I love you, I love you. and we're going to close gonna with our Chicago with Bulls, Bulls music, music that we started, that we started with. with. And, and if you recall, recall when this music when came, this came, on, came on, the lights went the out. Lights went out. And they began, they to, began wait. to wait. Ladies, Ladies and, and gentlemen, gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to the Orlando, to the Orlando Regional, Regional Realtor, Realtor Association. Association. Presenting, Presenting to you, to you your, champion, your champion, the championship, the championship realtor. realtor. None other than, than your, your Winner, winner, starting, starting. We're number, number one, Anna Gazzard. We're number two, number two, Keila Riviera. Riviera. We're at number We're double zero, zero, Lisa, Lisa Hill. Hill. We're, We're at number seven, to check her back. We're at number thirteen, Patty Alonzo Grandu. We're at number sixteen, Precious Green. Wearing number, number 21, 21 Juliana Giordano. Wearing number 99, Bill Levesque. Wearing number 2, Kathy Atkins. Number 3, Cheryl Abercrombie. Wearing number 6, Amelia Hunter. Are y'all getting it? I can't say everybody's name because we up over 100. But it's you. For the win. For the win. 
Love you. Love you. I love you. I love you. See you next week. See you next week. This has been Uplifting Cliff. Cliff. Remember, Remember thoughts, thoughts become, become things. things.